Well, welcome to video number two in the series, The Jesuits' Introduction to the Irish Tin Whistle. I'm Ryan Dons. I'm glad to be back with you. Um, just since we're, we're starting a new video series, I'd like to respond to someone who has written, uh, I think, four times. Um, and it's ironic that this person is writing, as I'm reading this book by uh, Jean-Luc Marion, called The Erotic Phenomenon. It's a, it's a philosophy or a phenomenology about love, and it's really good. Um, but I, I, I simply don't think that it would aid anyone's learning if I were to teach... Uh, with my with my shirt off, um, I think that would dissuade people from learning. But apparently, there is one person in the world who thinks that his or her learning um, would be enhanced by my doing the shirtless. I, I can't see how that's possible. So, thank you, but no, we won't do that. Uh, today, we're going to to work on a tune called the Temple House Reel, and it's a tune that I, I, I remember playing years and years ago, but I haven't played it in a long time. So, I'm going to try another style of teaching which will be, I will break it up into small phrases. I'll play it one time through, break it into small phrases for you, and then you can sort of follow along. I'm not going to say the names of the notes like I did in the Wild Rover. It's just cumbersome. Uh, you can go to www.thesession.org and look out the Temple House Reel, and they have both the notes in uh, staff notation and then in letter form, ABC format, and that might be helpful to you. But I will do the best I can to make it as clear as possible. So I'll play it one time through, really simple. I'll show you how I would learn it if I were learning it from scratch. And then I'll do something with it. That'll at least give you a sense of where we're going with the tune. So let's break it down. Um, it's, a, it's a relatively easy tune. It's a little bit repetitious. So we'll break it apart uh, into some of its main phrases. So the first phrase... One more time. Right up the scale with F sharp and C's are sharp in this tune. It's an E Dorian, whatever that's supposed to mean. So that's one phrase, that's the first phrase. Second phrase. Now, there are a couple E's that are put together, two E's in a row. You can tongue those, you can hit them, you can cut them. And when I play the tune sort of one time through on, well, I'll play a couple times through, uh, I don't know what I'll do with them, but there, there's any number of ways you could break them up. So just be, be aware of that. So if you're putting in ornamentation, if you're more advanced, you can cut, you can hit, you can slide or bend them. Uh, or if you're new to this, you might just want to, to, to try tonguing them. So, one more time. So the A part. Followed by the B part. Now we move into the C phrase. which should sound familiar because it's the A phrase all over again. So the A, B, C um, part so far. And then finally the D phrase of the first part.
All right, so the beginning of the D part is just like the beginning of the C, B part, at earlier the B phrase. Um, if that's nomenclature confuses you, I apologize. I'll come up with something new the next time I teach it to him. So you're going up the scale. You can do a roll there. So up the scale. First part. I hope that's clear. Well, you'll hear it again in a few minutes. All right, going up to the second part now, the B part. This of the tune. Uh, this is a single real, so it's once the A part, once the B part, and then back and forth. So if you go to Patrick Orso's Live at Mona's as a CD, my brother-in-law, Brian Holleran, great flute player, great Illinois pipe player, uh, great whistle player, um, he's on that CD. They have a, a, a version of this tune, so does Matt Malloy and a host of others. It's, it's a popular tune. So um, you'll hear it played maybe three or four times because it's, it's a, it's each part's played singly. Uh, B part. Starting up on the high G, All right, so it stays. It's it's high register for that whole first phrase, the A phrase of the B part of the second part. It's phrase B. So that little that little that last measure is the same as the last measure of the A of the first part. So it's it's not um it's not new. So one more time through the this is the, the B phrase of the second part. So up to now we have then we move on to the C part. Part two. And that goes into the, the A part. Let's do that. That C and I, I play the D part too. So C part. D part, the final part of this tune. So let me play it a couple of times so you get a sense of what I might do with it. Um, this is one of my, it's not one of my common repertoire tunes, so I'll do it until I, I hit the uh, like nine minute forty five second mark. So we get a minute of one. This has been instructional for you. Again, the entire point is not for you to play like me, but to discover your own voice and to claim your place within a larger and much more comprehensive and far richer Irish tradition. Thank you and God bless.